Hey guys, what's up? This is JRP77 from Changing Games, and I'm going to be continuing my tutorial series after a long break on how to make a 2D RPG in Unity. So, the reason I was taking a long break was I was kind of working on some other stuff, and also our Storm Strike, our game Storm Strike. That's going to be, um, I highly suggest you guys go check out that video that has a bunch of stuff that we've done. And yeah, so I've, also, I've just finished importing this into Unity 5. Because Unity 5, I had to make sure that a lot of stuff was all the same. And so now you can see we move around. We kind of have like a lag, so we're going to work on that in a later tutorial. But when we walk into the chest, it just says chest opened. Now, if I'm correct, that's not what a chest is supposed to say. Like a chest doesn't just go chest open every time you do something, like when you open it. That's not what a chest does. A chest gives you an object, and you can pick that object out, up out of that chest. So... What we are going to do is we're going to rewrite our chess script. Now, the chess script we had was already a, um, it was just working, but it was just saying that that was just a proof of concept. But one of the things that I did wrong in that tutorial was I put the chess script on the player. Why did I do that? I don't know, but I've actually removed it from there. And now I have gone to the chest and I've created an empty game object inside of it called chess trigger. On here, I have set it to look for the tag player. And so now, it actually works. I don't know why I put it on the player, but yes. So, in order to do this, um, in most games I've played, you don't want the same thing to happen. Like, for chess, you can't take an object out of a chess twice. B, you cannot, um, in the games that I've been um, playing, like Zelda and games like that, it... It's very infrequent that it gives you one thing. Sometimes, most of the time, it's a random thing. So, like, sometimes it'll give you 10 rupees, or sometimes it'll give you 15 rupees. Something like, like Stuff like that is just a big thing. So, what we are going to do is we are going to rewrite our script. But first of all, I would like to discuss randomization in Unity. So, the way randomization works... Randomization... Sorry, I forgot how to spell that in unity okay so in unity there's a bunch of different things there's the random class so in unity there's a thing called the random class now basically what that is is it's just a it's a function that you could call etc it's just a function that's what a class is inside this are several things there's um random dot inside unit sphere i think it's in unit sphere um, there's random.range, and then there's, it's just, etc. There's a bunch of functions like this, but we are actually not going to be using this, because, well, we want to, we want to use this, the random.range. So random.range has, this is how it works, it just calls the function, so we'll say, this is the syntax, Random dot range, then it takes a f um, two integers. It takes a float minimum and a float maximum. And so what this is is it's looking for two parameters: um, one a minimum value and another a maximum value. And then what it does is it takes this number and this number and it finds a number in between. That's how it works. So now we are going to implement that into our game, or our project. So what we're going to do is we're going to go open the chess script. Now here I'm going to need to add two, um, one variable. I'm going to just say public game object. Now this is very important or else this will not work. Do a left bracket and then a right bracket. That creates an array out of the object. We're just going to call this objects, semicolon. Now if I save this, I'll show you what an array is. If I go to our chest script, you can see we have this now. It's a drop-down menu, and we can set this to as many as we want. We can say 2, we can say 100, though you can do just about anything with arrays. So right now I'm just going to keep the size 0. Now we need to create the script that will make this work. But first, we need a point to spawn this from, because we don't want it spawning inside the crate. We want it to kind of spawn out in front of the crate, like where the player is going to be. So I'm going to create a public transform 
um, spawn point. So basically what a transform is, is the game object is the game object looks at the entire function. The transform looks at one component and that is this, this transform component. That def determines the position of the object. So that's a very important thing to have. And it's, and it's easier than using another variable called a vector 3 which takes three um, float values and then from there I mean, you could use vector threes, but it's very like we used with our um, our player script. But vector threes are not very useful for this situation. So now we're going to go into our open chest function, and we're going to delete this line. Bye, you're gone. So now we're going to say game object item is e is equal to instantiate. Now the way the now instantiate just basically means spawn an object in the scene. It's just a fancier term. So I wish they would just change it to like spawn or like insert object or something like that, but instead they have instantiate. So instantiate, and then we want it to now we need to give it the comp the three components it takes is the rotation and the position. So what we're gonna say is we are gonna have to get a random value from here. So we're gonna say random dot range, then we're going to open up the parentheses, say objects, um, bracket zero, comma, objects, dot length. Now what this is doing right here, is this is finding number, the first object, because computers start counting at zero, and then that's making it that minimum number. Then it's going to set the uh, this to the maximum number. Number and this function, the dot length function, just finds how many objects there are in here and makes and it um, puts it as an integer. So yeah, now we need now that we have what we want it to spawn, we are going to give it an object to spawn. We need to give it a position to spawn at and a rotation. So now we're going to say comma spawn point dot position, and then we're going to say comma and I'm going to say quaternion dot identity. Actually, no, we're just going to use, that's a more complicated and, yeah, we're not going to use that. So, rotation. So, what this is giving it is it's giving it two places. It's giving this position, which if you remember, the posi it's looking for these three values, and then it's looking for the rotation, and it's giving it these three values. Now, we're not going to give it scale because we don't want it to be random scale. So, yeah. Now that we have that, I'm going to save this script and come back into Unity. Sorry, guys. I have a cold right now, so I'm just going to make this script. Okay, random dot range float. Okay, I had this last time. Oh, we missed a huge thing. Okay, so at the very end, we just say, as game object. Um, that's, only, that's a C-sharp thing, so yeah. I saved it. Huh. What is this? Game object item instantiate random dot range objects. Um, colon zero comma objects dot length yeah then spawn po comma spawn point dot position comma ah Mr. capitalization I'm telling you capitalization will kill you do not see what is wrong I'm gonna pause the video and I'll come back once I fix it Hey guys, so I figured out what was wrong. What I was doing was I was saying to spawn a random number and that doesn't work. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete this and we're going to say instead of random orange, we're going to do it in reverse. We're going to say objects and then we're going to do the bracket. Then we're going to say random dot range and then open up the parentheses zero comma objects dot length. Then that sh and then close the bracket and that should work. And it does work. Wow, that was sad. I can't believe I forgot that. 
So now I'm going to go and the spawn point, we want to create an empty game object inside of the chest to spawn this at. So I'm going to create an empty child, and then I'm going to call this just game object. Now, on the chest trigger, we are going to set this game object's position right there. We don't want to move that, we want to move this to about right there. Okay, now I want to make some objects for this. So first, I'm going to create two materials. So I'm going to create a material. I'm going to call this coin. I'm going to duplicate it and call it health. Now it's very important that you change these to unlit because as you can see it's making it shiny and I just get a color. There. Now in the first one, the coin one, I'm going to make this like a goldish color like that. Then on the health, I'm going to make it like a light blue like that. Now I need to create two things. So I'm going to create a quad like we did last time. I'm going to move it out. I'm going to give this one the coin material. I'm going to duplicate it. Move it over. And I'm going to give it the health material. Now I'm going to take this, name it health. I'm going to take this one and name it coin. Then I'm going to drag this in to here to create a prefab, and then drag this in to create a prefab. Then I'm going to delete both these objects from the scene. Now on the chest trigger, we're going to go into here, and we're going to set size to 2. Now I'm going to select, drag in the coin, and then I'm going to drag in the health. So now I'm going to save this, play it, and now you'll see if we walk up, bloop, that generates. And then if we go over it again, it generates that again, and let's see if I can get to a coin. Huh. Let's see. It's only... Hmm. But let's see if it changes if I play again. See, now it's a coin. So it's going to randomly spawn one of those. But now we don't want it to where... Because there's actually a glitch where you can go into it over... I'm going to get out of that collider. Oh, dead gun it. There's some glitch I discovered where you can go in and then out. See, look how it's changing. We don't want that. So now we're going to go back into our script. And we're going to create a Boolean. A private Boolean. I'm gonna it's called private bool chest opened. Semicolon. Then we're going to say in this thing right here where it says if call.gameobject.tag is equal to tag name, then we're going to say and chest, and then we're going to put an exclamation point, chest opened. Now what the exclamation point does is it's an operator that basically tells it to say, to do the opposite. So like if you had, so if it is null, basically it's not there, or it's not true, then to call this. So now we're going to say, as soon as this happens, before this, we're going to say chest opened is equal to true. There. Now, if we go in here, we shouldn't have any errors. And then we can go in and let's see if the, and the glitch should not happen. So what we did in this is we created a script that allows us to generate a random object from an array of objects. And so next tutorial, what we're going to be covering is how to collect these items and how to add to them. So we're going to be adding the coin system up here, and then we're going to learn the health system up here. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please subscribe to us on YouTube if you like this, and if you didn't like us, this, comment below and say why. I'm open to any criticism. I'm still learning how to do this. Also, don't forget to um, like us on, not like, because that's Facebook and we don't have a Facebook. Follow us on Instagram and follow us on Twitter. Those are both at the end, at the bottom of the description. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you guys later.